Can you hear me? All hear me? I advise that the meeting of the committee will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including Transparent Outside Australia. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect the culture, heritage, beliefs and relationships of the land. We acknowledge that they are continue, continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Apologies from Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin and Councillor Kira. Um, can I seek a mover seconder for confirmation uh, for confirmation of minutes um, of the committee held on the 8th of December 2020? Uh, thank you, Councillor Canole, seconder. Thank you, Councillor Pem today. Would you like to speak to it? No. Would you like to speak to it? No. Uh, would we, anyone else like to speak to the motion? No. Let's all vote. Those uh, in favour? Those against? Councillor Mackey? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that is carried. There's no presentations tonight. Um, and we'll go straight to item 5.1 regarding the City Connector consultation outcome. So tonight, uh, we'll have uh, all questions to be directed to Matthew. So does anyone have any questions? No? Yes? Councillor Mark? Is there any questions? <laughs> um, just draw your attention to the... Uh, in the report, I can't remember the number now, uh, where you talk about the cost of Tindo and replacement batteries and the versus the diesel ones as well. Um, so I think it said from memory you're replacing two of the 11 batteries at $79,000. How, how, how often is that? So over a, what's the average out per year cost of the batteries is the crux of my question. Or over a 10 year period or whatever increment. Uh, it's through the, through the chair. We don't have the exact worked out uh, value of that, but uh, the, the bus is, there's 11 batteries in the bus. That, um, the, the buses are so about 10 years old and they, they last about 10 years, so um, we'd have to replace all of them over that period of time. Right. And so the individual cost of the battery would be, and does that vary at all? Uh, through the chair, so the, the total cost of the batteries to replace is over around about 400,000 for the 11 of them, um, and obviously we review their life through um, that they would not ultimately fail at the same time, which is why we space them out over a period of time, and obviously we renew them as they, they come up. Yeah, yeah. And is, is it, would it be, sorry, would it be the case that because the Tindo's older, there would be better batteries, but they may not be compatible with the bus's technology as well. And would that affect costs? Uh, through the chair, that, that's possible as technology improves. Um, we'll look to uh, the latest battery options and how they will fit the TL technology. But it may be compatible with it, or is, is that something the administration haven't come across yet? The chair, yes. thank you. It's uh, certainly something we'll look at with the replacement of the first two. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, furthermore, the, uh, I, and I thank you in the report for noting um, that the, uh, I think the timing stops you call it at Halifax Street caused considerable consternation um, to the residents that are now living there. Uh, has there been any work done or does, does the administration have any ideas around potential other timing stops or alternatively, um, could uh, could the operators just turn off the bus while they're idling? Is that an option? Uh, through the chair, there's been no further work in that investigation. Uh, obviously, pending tonight's uh, council uh, final council 
um, support of retention of the, the route. Um, the stopovers may last anywhere from 10 seconds to three minutes. So also if there's an extended period, um, then they can potentially turn off the bus, but I suppose the economics of literally sitting there for 30 seconds on a 30 minute route um, isn't economical. So that, that would be up to the independent uh, operator to determine whether it's a 10 second. 10 second stop or a 30 second stop or a two minute stop. Do we have any information or is it recorded anywhere? Through the chair. Through the chair. Hi. Through the chair. Do we have any information or is it recorded anywhere? Um, how how long they stop over at these locations and how long for? Because anecdotally, I'm told that out of an eight hour working day, you'll have various buses stopping there for you know, up to three or four hours cumulatively over the course of it that's that's the feedback i get told people complain there is always a bus idling out front of their house and it seriously decreases their quality of life uh, through the chair we will have to review that um, i think the the timing of three hours would be um, excessive at the end of the day we do uh, it's a 30 minute loop it runs between the hours of six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night um, so if you work that out, um, there's only an opportunity of sort of 14 odd times that it would stop there um, and it runs a pretty quick cycle of 30 minutes. So that corrective time of making a 30 minute loop um, would be in the order of minutes times 14. So, yeah. so through the chair, can we get that information of how long? Is it recorded anywhere? Potentially uh, well, GPS? The, the, the timelines and see if uh, we can get DIT to supply any other stop information and take that on notice. Be very appreciative. Thank you. Any other questions? No, thank you. Uh, members, I just want to remind you all know that we've had a bit of a break, but if you can direct all your questions through the chair and uh, one at a time and not in multiple times, please. Thank you. Item 5.2, uh, Recreation and Sports Grants Program, Round 1, Programs and Events, at Christy Anthony, City of Culture. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Councillor Donovan, through the chair. Um, I appreciate that the uh, proposition is only for one year because of a decision of council. Would it be helpful in this instance if there was a decision of council for this one unique circumstance um, to fund multiple years? Through the chair, it would be helpful for the applicant. However, we will be coming back to council with a workshop uh, to talk about the um, community cultural grants and potentially the sport and rec grants at the end of March. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, 5.3, Tennis SA Centre Court uh, Development Stage 2. Again, Christy Anthony, City of Culture. Any questions? No, all pretty straightforward. But just remember that your questions need to be put forward here today at the committee, not in our council chamber. So I would appreciate if you have any questions now, today is the time to do that. Sorry, Chair, just to clarify. So we're unable to ask questions in council? Well, it, it would be better and more efficient since we have all our staff here to ask the questions to get clarification on each item tonight. Thank you. Any uh, questions? Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Do, uh, do we receive rent for this? Do they lease this? You see what the that was to you. Yes. Thank you. Christine? Through the chair, we do. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, chair, I couldn't find it being mentioned in this document. And moreover, and more importantly, I couldn't find an indication of the rent going up. So I'm wondering Christy? if that has been discussed, if it would be coming back in confidence or. 
Um, so through the chair, the report does make a recommendation that we would do a rent review um, subject to council's decision. So uh, depending on council results to support this last week, a rent review will be part of the next steps. And through the chair, is it the view that the rent could go up substantially? I mean, and is it uh, legally and contractually? I mean, if we're unpacking various parts of the lease, um, is it at our discretion? You know, if we're re-signing, if we're signing a fresh document, so we can sign a fresh price tag, no? Do they have a right to redevelop? Sorry, just to be clear, they wouldn't have a new lease agreement, so it's an amendment to the existing lease agreement, um, and we would um, look to do a um, market rent review on that agreement. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item uh, 5.4. We have the Playhouse Lane and Gillies Arcade partial road closure for the Queen's Theatre Fringe Park. Christy again. Any questions? Everything pretty straightforward for everyone. No question. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Uh, 5.5, <laughs> proposed event in the parklands, um, Air Grove 2021, Air Grove, sorry. Uh, Christy, again. Any questions? No? No questions? Uh, oh, um, yes, Councillor um, McKean. Uh, apologies, Chair. Um, can you just remind me, through you, Chair, um, perhaps Christy, uh, do these, where these dates align in respect of um, uh, Illuminate Highway, or either? Thanks. Uh, through the chair, so uh, Illuminate Adelaide is the 16th of July until the 1st of August, yeah. and I can confirm that um, this applicant is in discussion right. with Illuminate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. All good. Okay. We'll go to item 5.6, uh, regulated tree removal at Peppermint Park, uh, Witamara Park 18, Witamara, Witamara, Matthew Morrissey, Matthew, okay, we have uh, any questions are directed here to Clinton? <laughs> no, you never know. Like something important. All good. Okay, item 5.7, uh, 2021 LGA Ordinary General Meeting Items of Business and Voting Delegate. We have Sue Lovell here. Sorry. Oh, okay. Didn't know that we'd do so far. That's right. It's been very efficient tonight. Should we move on to the next one? Well, I, I, I did have a question. You do? Okay. But just, just one. Um, I'll see the acting CEO might be able to answer it. Uh, did, did we collect suggestions for the motions that we would put up? Is that, is that that's something? Yeah, yeah, no, I thought, got to read my source. <laughs> Um, I didn't see anything in there indicating who put what, though. So did, did each of the... Motion? Sorry, for the, the actual motions that we proposed to put forward. Is that right? Was that... I think it is. Why? Excuse me, uh, all the questions are directed through the chair to the... Sorry, the through, the, through, the the chair, question, through the chair, through the chair, in response to the interjections, which may be relevant questions. I want to know what council members have suggested and what staff have suggested, if there is any difference and if staff have suggested anything. CEO or acting CEO? Um, I just need Sue to clarify, but my understanding was there was uh, no suggestions from council members, and therefore there's one suggestion in there from the staff right. um, about the um, rating policy. I think, but I just need Are to. Are you satisfied check. with that answer? Or would you like to wait for Sue? Well, I can, I, 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 I'm happy for Sue to pass me something on. That's fine, but I just would like to know as well, Chair. Is it is it common practice for councillors to not submit anything, but in lieu of that lack of submission to the administration to draft something and present it to, for it to go to the LGA? Yeah. 
Sorry, I was distracted by Christy walking out the door. Can you repeat that, Sorry, please, no, Councillor Hyde? Through the chair, uh, is, it, is it often the case that councillors won't submit something, but then staff will, will draw up uh, motions to go through to the local government association? Uh, it's usually um, a mixture, yeah. So um, previous reports have come through. There's usually a mixture of um, council member-led ones, and it's usually um, quite topical, and it's been things that councillors uh, may well have been raising throughout the year, saying, so, you know, it's ideal for an LGA for a national ALGA um, discussion, um, and um, admin will also um, make suggestions as well. Last year, we kept going. And last one, in future, would it be possible for that to be detailed in the report? So, detailed in the in, report? In, in lieu of a lack of submissions from councillors, the administration has prepared XYZ. In, in lieu of no submissions yeah. or three submissions or something like that, would that be possible? Yeah, we can. But Sue is now here. Thank you, Sue. Are you able to please confirm um, for members? Um, how many submissions you receive from council members on the back of the e-news and whether, um, yeah, how many you received and therefore um, what we are proposing to put forward. Um, okay, yes, certainly. Um, through you, Chair, uh, we didn't receive any submissions from council members as a result of the e-news. Um, therefore, we've uh, prepared something that uh, members may wish to consider to put forward. That's come from the administration. It's based on um, the uh, decisions of council last year through the local government review bill process, um, where councils um, on multiple occasions call for a review of rate rebates and exemptions. So it seems a suitable candidate to put forward to you. Has that thank satisfied you, you Councillor Hart? I mean, they're actually much better this year than they were last year. Okay, thank you thank for you. your running commentary. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. No. So do we have any other questions? Really so do we um, have any other questions? To yeah. Through the chair, on. noting who has been put forward as the delegate and the um, acting delegate just to assess whether that's likely to go ahead ahead of the council meeting. Are you, are you going to attend? Oh, I haven't seen this yeah. I have, well, I'll assume so that if I've been elected, I will be attending. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to. Oh, well, I'll um, take that into consideration. Yeah, we need to decide that. Yeah, we'll that. Time. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll bring forward into the council meeting so we can. Wait, are we going to vote on? Are we going to vote on that? We do. We do. Uh, yeah, yeah, so just to be clear, yeah. next week you will be voting on yeah. yeah. so We're voting, We're voting on it next week. Yeah. A new delegate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item five point eight, a uh, quarter two finance report. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Chair, through you. Uh, uh, just a quick question in relation to uh, on page three of the report, item um, 11, as at 12th January, 87.5% of payments have been received and there have been 81 applications for hardship, 4% uh, of the quarter, the second quarter of notice. Just, uh, Sandra, what would um, anybody, what would be the actual dollar value that we're talking about? The ball, ballpark at uh, the child probably have there. It's not on the top of my head, so that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll have to send it through. Not to be a trick question, just no, no. percentages are one thing, dollars actually. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Through you, uh, following on from some questions I put to the administration earlier today um, regarding if we're looking at the operating summary, uh, amounts received specifically for new or upgraded assets, and I thank the administration for answering that question um, quite clearly, so that encompasses grants from, from other levels of government and what have you. Um, I, I'm assuming that if, if they're saying that we're being given 
half the money for Mojit Street or half the money for the bikeway or what have you. Um, uh, and that's sitting in that section um, under the operating surplus deficit. But the, the funding that the council is putting into that project is sitting somewhere in our capital works budgets, is that correct? Thank you. Apologies, Chair. Um, through the Chair, yes, that is correct. Within the uniform presentation of finances, it includes the capital outlay on existing assets and any new and upgrade, move to street and the like would be expended from new and upgraded assets. So the expenditure was within that statement, the income that we receive is recorded against that against that line as well. However, the income is also reflected in the uniform uh, in the operating summary below the line. Yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, furthermore, I, I requested some further clarity, which was kindly provided by the administration around I think it was materials, contracts and other expenses. Um, and in that, um, there was something that stuck out at me and that was a $180,000 variance under the category of subscriptions. Um, could the administration please provide uh, details as to what subscription we bought that was $180,000 that we did not expect to buy? Through the chair, I'll have to take the details of the exact subscriptions on notice. However, it is only a year to date figure, so it could be that we've paid the subscription ahead of when the budget was allocated. Okay, okay, good. Um, that's good. Um, through you, chair, I'm now just looking at the. Um, looking at, let me scroll down. Uh, some of the infrastructure program adjustments and retimed. Um, and specifically, Chair, I'm looking at events infrastructure in um, Rundle Park, which uh, I understand we ticked off in, a, um, in the budget, but more form that it was happening via end use. Um, uh, we have a $650,000 variance there. Is that, is that quite a, and budgeted we had $807,000. Um, is it commonplace for variances of that degree to occur in tenders? And at what point is it actually a trigger for the administration to come back to council and say, um, you've only budgeted this much, the tender, the best tender we have is is almost double that. We need you to approve it again. Um, I know the administration has the ability to approve lots of expenditure, I think under $4 million or something without coming back to us, but um, this is a budget item that we ticked off on. So if I could chair. Uh, see you. Uh, through the presiding Sorry. member, um, sometimes with projects, what we find is um, we put um, a, an allocation forward through the budget process, and then by the time we go to market, the price is different. Um, and so, what we require Clinton and the team to do is manage to basically the bottom line of that sort of budget. And if council hasn't endorsed the intent of the budget, then we rely on the um, skills of our procurement team and contract managers to make sure we're getting value for money through the procurement. But sometimes we don't actually know the price of a project, but we've already budgeted for it um, until it goes to market. Um, there's that. In terms of the difference um, that we're presenting tonight, my understanding is uh, there was um, some large carry forward, um, which may well have impacted that project as well. So, Clinton, I'm not sure if we're able to just provide a bit more clarity um, if we come through the call. Yeah. I've got a little bit more clarity through the chair just on the on the project itself. So dealing with, I think, a part of the um, budget variation with this project, councillor, was around dealing with the utility companies. So mm -hmm. we don't always have necessarily control over the pricing um, that we get back from those um, utility companies. So typically we wouldn't expect to see a variation of this quantum on any of our projects, but in this case we are dealing with um, the likes of SA Water and um, uh, Sappen and uh, APA Gas and, and so on. So um, dealing with them to try and get infrastructure into the car plans has seen a, a bit of a, a, a spike in the cost to undertake that work. Um, in saying that, we also, within the infrastructure budget, we're dealing with um, uh, some projects that come in under budget. 
So what we're able to do within that budget allocation and under delegation is, is balance that. So if we can deliver some projects under budget, we can accommodate some of those projects that may run slightly over budget. Mm -hmm. And I know that <coughs> you do, so that's good. Uh, just just one further one through the chat. Um, on that on that point, oh, uh, is it the utilities companies are uh, obviously they they sort of set the price. Is there any sort of um, requirement, legislative or otherwise, in place for them to set what is it, a fair price or, or something like that? Who who watches what they're doing? Uh, they um, obviously they work under their own act in most cases, <coughs> councillor. Um, that we do have recourse through the ombudsman if we believe that um, the pricing that we're receiving back is uncompetitive. Um, but in this case, it, it wasn't uncompetitive. It was a case of um, scope creep and also um, just prices coming back from the market generally that, um, that saw that change in budget. Um, and I think this is the last one through the chair. I know that um, under buildings for the infrastructure program, latent conditions discovered during construction required additional budget for the U Park, uh, Rundle U Park, at just over half a mil. Um, could we have some clarity on what latent conditions are? I don't, I'm not familiar with the term. Good. Um, through the Chair, so the latent condition here was in relation to the concrete slabs um, within the car park. So when um, the contractor um, was effectively cutting into the slab to repair some of those patches. They found some reinforcement and some other parts of the concrete that was um, unsound as well. So um, we undertook to fix that while we were in there um, as a latent condition that couldn't be that couldn't have been foreseen at the time of timbering the project. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think this is the final one, if I may chair. Um, uh, under bridges, um, there's a re reference to, and it's not a very big figure, but it is a very scary word, urgent works, um, uh, a sort of design and urgent works for bridges. What were the urgent works required and which bridges were they required? Sorry, at bottom of page 11, which is page 100. Uh, through you, Chair, is that, is that in reference to the $13,000 reference? Is that yeah, what yeah, you mean? Yeah. I'd have to take it on notice. So I'm, I don't have the detail on that, but um, I can get back to you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, um, thank you. Um, members, I did receive um, you know, various bits of feedback just around uh, the information, how we're presenting it. Um, and so the variances between um, Q1 um, and the last time we saw the long-term financial plan in December versus what we're presenting tonight. Um, and so we'll take that feedback on board um, and bring um, more visibility um, to the explanation around differences from quarter to quarter to, so that members are clear. Um, the other thing to note is that we do have a session um, with the audit committee this Friday and then with members on Tuesday the 23rd of February where we'll do um, much more of a deep dive into the long-term financial plan and various elements within it. So that, that will be coming to you um, in a couple of weeks' time. So, yes, Councillor. Very, very quickly, but I thank the administration for reducing the deficit by five million dollars. It's a fantastic yes. achievement, and I'm no, I'm sure it was no small feat across the organisation. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Any other question? No, I can't. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, no, we're we're on five point eight. We're we? still on five point eight. Okay. All right, we're now going to 5.9, the ratings policy for 2021-22. Um, I'll take some questions. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, through you, uh, uh, a question to the administration. In years past, and obviously this is my first part of this, this part of the cycle in many a year, um, has there been standard practice for the resolution of council to include uh, uh, um, notations regarding uh, rating, rate income foregone? Sanjay? This is my first puttering policy that's gone as well, so. Oh. WCI? 
Um, through the presiding member, so when we workshop with this um, with you late last year, um, it's been a while since the rating policy have been reviewed. So although it's consulted on each year as part of the annual business plan and budget in terms of um, any changes to the rating policy that had not been done for um, many years. Um, so is it standard practice? It's hard to say. We just felt that um, the discussion on the night merited um, certainly from a council consideration um, the opportunity to perhaps um, showcase that. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Uh, just briefly, Chair, I noticed, um, I was actually just trying to bring it up. Um, too late now. I've noticed the City of Unley has uh, far more classifications for uh, rates and in actual fact, um, from what I can deduce, they provide uh, different rates, differential rates um, for properties, classes of properties, depending on which street they are on, say if they're on Main Street, like Unley or King William Road. Um, is there any reason why we in the City of Adelaide couldn't take a similar approach uh, to rating and in effect by doing so create special economic zones? Uh, to the Chair, we can, we can have differential rates uh, depending on areas, locations, streets, um, yeah, it's any way you want to cut it. So yeah, it's definitely the act allows for that. Fascinating. Councillor Sims. Thanks, um, Chair. And through you, I noted the um, inclusion in the um, revised policy of a differential rate on vacant land proposed to be 200 per cent higher than the declared residential rate, i.e. double. I was wondering how much money that will raise um, for the City of Adelaide. Thank you. Sorry, I just checked my notes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, did, we did model that, I think, as part of that briefing right, and yeah. Yeah, I'm just pulling this. Um, sorry, the information that I've got is actually we didn't model it against the 200% increase. We modeled it based on the current non-residential rate on the dollar. So if we take the current vacant land that we've got valuations and multiply that with the current rate on the dollar, that works out to be approximately um, $327,000. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Chair, was that total or increase? Total. Okay. To the Chair, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. That's it for tonight. There's been uh, no other items. I thank you all for coming tonight and I declare the committee closed.